With the Treaty of Versailles in the pocket, the Weimar Republic could not have been started worse. Soon there were uprisings and coup attempts from left and right wing extremists. For example, the Spartacist uprising. There was also a coup attempt by Wolfgang Kapp. My name is Stefan, this is History Hustle, and I'm standing in Berlin, Germany. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Kapp Putsch. According to the Treaty of Versailles, the army of Germany, the Reichswehr, was now allowed to have only 100,000 soldiers. At that point, there were 350,000 soldiers. So yeah, you do the math, these were 250,000 too much. Most of these soldiers also took part in the Freikorps. These were paramilitary organizations who got organized after the war was over and did not hand in their weapons. Now, the Social Democrat government leader Friedrich Ebert ordered to these Freikorps to be dissolved. However, the Freikorps did not want it to be dissolved. They are being supported by the German general von Lutwitz, who was the founder of these Freikorps. Von Lutwitz asked Ebert to stop the dissolving of his troops. However, Ebert refused. From that point on, von Lutwitz orders Marine Brigade Erhard to march to Berlin. Von Lutwitz was working together with the nationalistic politician Wolfgang Kapp. The coup d'etat was named after him, the Kapp Putsch. And on the 13th of March 1920, they occupy Berlin. Ebert ordered the army to suppress the uprising, but he was met with a firm no. Reichswehr does not fire at Reichswehr. And so, the Social Democratic government had to flee to Stuttgart. Kapp became the new Reichskanzler. In other places of the countries, the Reichswehr was more looking at things to happen. They were not aggressively opposing the coup attempt, but they were not supporting it too much either. Ebert called upon the labor classes of Berlin, go into strike, which they did. And so, Berlin was down. The labor classes refused to work. And so, Kapp and von Lutwitz were unable to govern the city, let alone the country. The coup failed, and both gentlemen fled to Sweden on the 17th of March. Reason for the failed coup was lack of support by the labor classes. So this coup might have failed, but it proved nevertheless how weak the Weimar Republic actually was. Think of it. Without a single shot fired, it got overthrown. After the failed coup attempt, there was an uprising by communists in the Ruhr, which got bloodily suppressed. The Weimar Republic continued to exist till 1933, when it came to an end. How that all happened? Talk about that next video. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe.